so yeah, this is image classification with Beam and AutoML. It's a simple way to orchestrate mach uh, simple machine learning pipelines. So this project is inspired by an, a real project called Wildlife Insights, and they provide uh, a way for uh, organizations to upload uh, camera trap pictures of animals, uh, and then they they classify those animals, and that way they can monitor uh, the wildlife populations in different places. So we actually have a video and a notebook where you can follow the entire uh, code, but I'll go through a summary of what's happening. So there are two uh, main uh, stages in, in which this happens. The first one is uh, training the model, and this is just uh, uh, building and training the machine learning model. Then we have to deploy it uh, somewhere, and then we can get uh, predictions or classifications for, for new, spe new, new animal species. Uh, so these are two separate stages, and they, they happen at, at different times. So let's start with the data. This is uh, the data set comes from Lila, uh, which is the labeled information library of Alexandria. It's uh, an organization for biology and conservation. Uh, they have a lot of data sets. Uh, one of them is the WCS uh, camera traps data set. It consists of approximately 1.4 million images. Uh, with around 675 species. And that is more than 560 gigabytes of images, uh, which is a lot. <laughs> One of the things to note ab about this data set is that it's very unbalanced, uh, which means that some species have uh, tens of thousands of images. Um, and then there are many species that only have like one, two, or three images. Um, so that's one thing that we have to uh, take into account for this. And also approximately 50% of the images are empty. This is because uh, camera traps, uh, they activate on a uh, motion sensor and then they take the, take the picture. But there's sometimes like just wind or something that um, triggers the, the motion sensor and it takes a picture and there's nothing in frame. Maybe the animal was somewhere else. Maybe it was just the wind uh, or a leaf falling, a branch, or something like that. The image files live in Azure, and that's where uh, Lila stores all their, all their images. So that's where we will be getting the images from. And so here's a quick uh, outline of what's happening. There's um, two beam pipelines. Uh, the first one is is just uh, a little bit of pre-processing. So they have uh, all the images with their annotations, uh, meaning like which, anim which species of animals uh, it is. Uh, those, have, those are in a JSON file. It's a pretty large JSON file. Uh, so we decided to make uh, upload this into a database. So the first thing is just uh, we, we're using a create to um, just specify the, the URL for the metadata file. And then with a flat map, the, uh, that function basically just downloads the, the JSON file, parses it, and then creates um, pairs with the category and image file name and then it just yields those pairs. Then we do a little bit of uh, data cleaning. We just filter out some of the, some invalid categories. Uh, this could be things like uh, maybe the category was null, maybe the category, category was empty, maybe it was something like unknown mouse or unknown or uh, a, a bunch of like other, um, categories that are not real. <laughs> um, so we just filter those out. We, we just get rid of those, uh, of those uh, pairs. And then finally, we, we write those, uh, the valid ones into BigQuery. 
Note that here we're only writing the category and the file name. We're not actually downloading the image. Uh, so this is pretty fast. It takes only maybe like six minutes or something to run. Uh, we decided to, since we were using AutoML, uh, we decided to run this in Dataflow. And this is how the job looks like. Uh, it took seven minutes to run. So didn't really get the chance to auto scale too much, but uh, we weren't too worried about this be because this is a one-time uh, thing only, and it wasn't taking too long anyways. Um, this is how the metadata table looks like. So it's just the category, which is the species name, and then the file name. Um, and this is where we can download that image file. And now the interesting part, which is actually training the model. For this, uh, one important thing is that we need to balance the data set. Uh, for machine learning to work properly, we want ideally a, a balanced data set. So uh, having like 900, I mean, um, 90,000 uh, images for a single species and then like one image for uh, a bunch of other species, uh, the machine learning model will actually learn that as a bias and will um, learn to predict the more common species more often just because it happens more often rather than actually looking into the image. Uh, so we want to avoid that. And we want to have a balanced data set. So um, in short, for images that, for species that we have a lot of images, we'll just take a random sample of uh, for them. Uh, we want to have a range between, um, let's say, between 50 and 100 images per species. Um, so we just make a random sample of 100 images. If there's, uh, if there's less than that, we'll get less. And then eventually, we, we just want to uh, get rid of the, of the smaller samples. So let's take a look, look at how that looks in Beam. The first thing is uh, reading the metadata from BigQuery. So this includes all the images. Uh, this is obviously unbalanced, uh, but we just want to have everything um, then uh, from BigQuery, we, we just get uh, we get a dictionary. Um, so we just make those into pairs so that we can uh, do some of the key operations in Beam. So the first uh, step is getting the random samples. Uh, we configure a, a maximum number of images per class. So we get uh, batches of well, uh, samples of at most uh, that number of images per class. Then um, we discard the samples that are smaller than the minimum number of images per class, which is another parameter that we choose when running this pipeline. And then finally, we flatten uh, those uh, lists of uh, like those samples, we flatten them into just a individual uh, category image, na image file name pairs again. And then finally, the images that we have is only a small subset of the entire data set. So we will only download those images. And if we get any errors like, uh, like the the, maybe we hit the, the maximum number of requests uh, to download things. Uh, we'll just retry again with, uh, with an exponential backoff. And maybe the, the file name doesn't exist. Uh, it'll eventually just uh, error out. Uh, for those, we just skip any error. So that's why we're using a flat map here. It's just so that, so that we can return zero or one element. Uh, and then finally, all of that is uh, saved into a P collection. And then that P collection, we will use it uh, for the next part. So now we need to prepare data for AutoML. And AutoML expects the data in a very specific way. Um, so the first thing is that it expects the, the data to live in a CSV file. 
uh, and that CSV file contains the name of the file as well as a category. Uh, but those files have to live in cloud storage. Um, so in the, in the previous one, when we're downloading the images, we're, we're actually downloading them to uh, cloud storage and then saving the cloud storage path where it's, uh, where it's saved. So this is these pairs of category and cloud storage path. That's exactly what we want to uh, save in, in the CSV file. So then we pass the collection of images as a as a site input into a map uh, transform and that map transform uh, basically just iterates over the pick collection and then writes everything into a file uh, then we do another map transform which basically just uh, creates the auto ml data set and this is a pretty fast operation it's just uh, creating like an empty data set uh, there is another operation in AutoML which is importing the CSV file into the data set. So this is the, the part that actually takes a, a, a while. Um, but in, in our case, we're just waiting it, waiting and until it finishes. It's not like super long time. Um, and then after it finishes, uh, we start the training job. And this is the, the part that takes the longest. So after that, we just finish the, the pipeline. So this is roughly how it looks like. Uh, the graph didn't fit into a single screen, so I, I did some Photoshop with it. <laughs> but basically, um, the whole thing, uh, we were running this for a, a small data set, so only 50 to 100 images per class, um, just so that we, we got some results. Uh, we, uh, uh, ideally, we would like uh, thousands of images per class. Um, but just to keep uh, running times short, we, we decided to go with just 50 to 100. And that took around 40 minutes. Um, We'll get, we'll get into how the, the auto scaling worked for this. It, it actually worked very well. Uh, but as we can see, there are two main transforms that are taking the longest. The get image, that's the, the part where we're downloading the images. And that apparently took uh, two hours and 22 minutes of combined time of all the workers. And then importing the images took 22 minutes. Uh, but let's see how that actually looks. Um, so if we we'll take a look into the job metrics, um, this first uh, spike, that's when we're downloading the images. We got to up to 36 workers, and they were all downloading images in parallel. Um, and we can see uh, here in the CPU utilization that they, they were pretty busy for the time being. And then after that, uh, Dataflow decided to auto scale to just one worker because it was not using the CPU at all. So during the 22 minutes of importing the data, um, it was basically just waiting. Um, it's not ideal, but uh, right now the AutoML uh, API doesn't have a way to have like a a, a callback or a or a webhook uh, to notify us when it's finished. Uh, but if, if it did, a good approach would be to stop the pipeline when importing. And then uh, whenever we get the callback, maybe trigger like a cloud function or something else uh, to, to send the, the training job. So after importing the data set and creating the data set, this is how it looks like in, in the Vertex AI uh, UI. So we get a bunch of. We get a, a preview of all the images with their uh, known label. So this uh, label, that's the, the, that's the species name. Uh, these data sets, like the, the labels for the data sets are usually made manually. So it, it takes hundreds and hundreds of hours of people just like clicking on images and like having experts manually classifying those images. So. Um, so fortunately, they uh, they shared all of that, so we can just we could just use that. Um, then after training the model, um, we can see the precision, 
and the recall uh, confidence and a bunch of other statistics that tell us how good our model is. Uh, right now, this is not like a, uh, breaking any records or anything, but at least we know that it's uh, it's actually learning pretty good. Uh, so we have an uh, almost eighty percent of precision, uh, which is which is fairly nice for something that that only trained for um, a couple hours. Then we also get a confusion matrix, uh, and this is what the model confused the most. So these are the top species that the model uh, got wrong the most, and then which with with which species um, it got confused with. So this is a this is also a, a pretty nice way to kind of debug and and see um, maybe find some biases in your data set. Uh, and then just like trying to fix those. Uh, so after that, well, after that, we just deploy the model. Uh, fortunately, Vertex AI, it's in, in Vertex AI, it's just a matter of clicking uh, deploy button, and then we get a, an endpoint um, where we can send predictions. Uh, so this is a, an example of an image. And, these got uh, correct prediction with a pretty high confidence value, 90, almost 93% confidence that this is the correct uh, species, which is very impressive, uh, considering that the, the lighting is not perfect. Um, then we have this other image. This is uh, some, uh, this is a uh, Leopardus weedy but the model confused it with the uh, Leopardus pardalis. It's not very confident about it. It, it was actually in it, the, the correct species was actually in one of the, the, the options that it suggested, uh, but it, the highest confidence was actually not correct. So it's, they're very similar. <laughs> uh, so maybe we could use the family instead of like the, the the species, uh, and then this way, uh, and then maybe have like another model trained only on, on leopards to see specifically which uh, species it is. And now, this is an example where it wasn't, where it didn't do too well. Um, this was probably because the animal was too far away and you couldn't see like any any of the details. Um, so the correct uh, species was actually found, but only with a 16% confidence. Uh, actually, none of the predictions that it um, that it gave were particularly confident about. Um, but yeah, this is this is one of the ones that that it uh, had a lot of confusion on. And yeah, so I think we still have uh, some time for for questions, if anyone uh, has any questions. I think that, that went a little faster than I expected. 